So medical school just finished and you're one of a handful of people in your class who want to go to America and prepare for USMLE. But everyone you ask gives you some sort of different advice. In this video, I'll provide a baseline structure for you to get a basic understanding on how to prepare for your USMLE Step 1. Before starting step one, everyone says they want to learn everything, but there are smart ways to study. There is something called high yield content. High yield content refers to the topics that have tested the most in step one. I know people who bogged themselves down and studied way too many resources and it ended up hurting them because they couldn't remember everything. So stick to a few resources, but I want you to master those resources. This is a marathon, not a sprint. If you can study hard hours every day, that's great, but burnout is definitely a real thing. And I prefer you take your time and go through quality runs of the subject instead of pushing hard hours every day and just burning out towards the end. Now let's talk about resources. You must have read around blogs and heard of UFAP for UWorld First Aid and Pathoma. These by far are your gold standards for USMOE. I want you to start using First Aid as early as possible from day one. Some people like to read other resources and start first aid when they're ready, but I do believe that the later you start first aid, the later you're gonna take your exam. Remember to always use the latest edition of first aid. Every word in first aid appeared inside the USMLE exam. Therefore, the latest edition has all the newest information that came straight from people who wrote their USMLEs. First aid is basically a book of all the information collected from students based on what they've experienced in their exam. Every paragraph consists of around two to three pages of concept that's been summarized into that tiny book. Therefore, you need additional resources for reference. The best reference resources that I would recommend are Boards of Beyond and Kaplan. You also have your additional resources that will supplement your golden resources. These will provide extra information to strengthen the information that you receive from your gold standard resources like First Aid. The additional resources that I recommend are Sketchy Micro, 100 Cases by Conrad Fisher, Anatomy Shelf Notes, and those Golgian audiobooks. Before we start, I do want to reassure you that I've talked to over 50 people who took their step one and got over 240s, 250s, and we tried to gauge their mistakes and we created an optimal study plan for you to get the highest score in the least amount of time possible. Now let's talk about study strategy. The average time to prepare for step one is anywhere from six months to 12 months. Now there are people who do it in less than six months and there are people who take more than 12 months. But I think when planning for step one, that's the ideal time frame that you should have in mind. So the prep time should be divided into three different phases. Your consolidation phase, your revision phase, and your precision phase. The consolidation phase lasts anywhere from three to six months. This is a phase where you have to learn all your concepts and collect all your information and put it in your first aid. So your first aid is divided into two sections. You have your general and you have your systems. The preparation time for each system should be anywhere from one week to two weeks. So let's start with systems. Now I'm going to use the system cardiology as an example on how to prepare. So in the first half of this prep time, you should be getting familiar with first aid. So in this example, you'll perfect cardiology in first aid, and you're gonna use some sort of reference resource to help you understand all the concepts. You can use either Boards and Beyond or Kaplan. After you're done with learning and understanding the concepts of first aid, you start your U world. For example, in cardiology, you spend anywhere from five to seven days reading first aid along with Boards and Beyond video or Kaplan videos. Then I would start U world. Now I'm gonna provide a different video on how to use UWorld during the consolidation phase, but I'm gonna summarize the important points right here. Now each system of UWorld has anywhere from 100 to 300 questions. It is very important for you to do UWorld correctly during the consolidation phase, or you might have to redo the entire thing later and waste an extra two to three months. During your consolidation phase, I recommend you to do tutor mode and system wise. This basically means that you're gonna be doing the UWorld questions only for cardiology, and after every question, they're gonna provide an explanation. It takes four to six hours per block just because each question has one to two paragraphs of information that you do not have in your first aid. And it's absolutely crucial for you to write this down or annotate it in your first aid or a notebook. I personally made the mistake of not annotating too well during my consolidation phase. And three months later, when I finished UWorld, 
I don't remember any of the information that I've learned from UWorld and I had to redo the entire thing and write it down in the first day. And this wasted around two months. This is why I'm stressing the importance of annotating UWorld properly in first day. A lot of people get upset because they get low scores in their first round of UWorld, but the first round of UWorld should be used as a learning tool, not an assessment tool. There's a lot of new information that no one's come across and that's not been present in first aid. And your goal should be to collect this information and annotate it in first aid. Don't feel bad when you get a low score in your first round. Every person I've spoken to has gotten a low score in their first round of UWorld. So don't let it bum you out. I'm going to make a video on the details of how to study during your consolidation phase. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer your questions in my next video. By this time, you should be done with your first round of UWorld and your first round of first aid. So in this phase, you're going to start your second round of UWorld. But you're going to do UWorld a little bit differently from how you did it in your consolidation phase. Now you want to do it timed and random. And when I say random, I mean you shouldn't do your questions according to individual systems. You should do all of them at once. Now you want to do these two UWorld blocks back to back. And you don't want to take a break in between. It's going to be hard at first, but with time, you're going to slowly get better. After you're done doing your two blocks, you should spend anywhere from two to three hours reviewing your questions. In the consolidation phase, it took four to six hours, but here it takes a lot less time because you've already annotated everything in your first day. So now you can just focus on the content and mastering it. After you're done reviewing your UWorld block, you should start reading first aid. Now you should finish your second round of first aid in around a month. And third and fourth revisions onwards, it shouldn't take more than 20 days. Between each round of first aid, you should do one NBME to properly assess where you're at. Now your first NBME score is going to be really bad. And I want to assure you that this is completely normal. So don't get discouraged by it. After your second or third round of first aid, you should sit down and evaluate what systems you're bad at. This is why this phase is a little bit more person specific. Everyone has their own weaknesses and you should spend how much ever time you feel fit to properly conquer these weaknesses. In this phase, you're going to be using a little bit more of your additional resources. I recommend using Sketchy Micro for 20 minutes every night just to learn 2-3 to three bacteria. Microbiology can get a little bit overwhelming, but if you do 20 minutes of sketchy every single day, by the time you take your step one, you will have mastered micro. Now it's really important to do your two blocks every single day. Some people like to take a break from your world and just focus on studying first day, but question strategy is key. In step one, you're not gonna know everything. You're only gonna know 60 to 70% of the information. So it's your job to prepare yourself to bridge that extra 20 to 30% just by common sense and question strategy. And this takes practice. This is why even if you take a break for a few days and don't study, I still recommend you to do your two blocks of UWorld every day because every day you're not doing your UWorld blocks, you will slowly lose the hang of it. Your precision phase is the last one to two months of your preparation before you write your step one. It is really important for you to maintain the same routine every single day. You'll take step one around eight in the morning. So you should wake up every day at 5 a.m. Now during my consolidation and my revision phase, I was a night person. I used to study all night and sleep during the day. But I had to change my sleep cycle and make sure I woke up at five every day because the last thing you want is to get sleepy during your eight hour USMLE step. This is where you should be focusing on your questions. I'd say do three to four blocks every day. Some people say you should simulate an eight hour exam and take two NBMEs back to back, but I really don't think that's necessary. I think if you can do three to four blocks every single day, then when your exam comes around, you should comfortably be able to do eight hours. Trust me, those eight hours during your test will fly by. Now, this is the phase where you focus on what you're weak at. Some people don't know what they're weak at and they look at their MBMEs, but remember, your MBMEs aren't a perfect depiction. Try to make sure you have a list of all the stuff you need to memorize two to three days before step one. And when you're in the week before, this is all you're prepared. In the description, I left a few topics that I believe you definitely need to touch in the last three to four days before your step one. I highly recommend not to study the day before the exam because you need a day to mentally relax and step back. Whatever you study the day before will be running around in your mind and will definitely affect 
your diagnosing ability. Try to make sure you're not learning anything new in the last month. Your main goal is to flip through pages and just get a generalized idea. Remember, just like I said before, no matter how much you study, you're not gonna know everything on your test. Also, in the last month, you wanna take an MBME every week and spend a day going over your MBMEs. I'm gonna create another video on what order you take your MBMEs in, the right way to take them, and the right way to go over them. Now, the next thing I tell you is sort of a topic of debate, basically on when you should do your incorrect questions of UWorld. When you go through UWorld, you're gonna have a lot of questions you get wrong. That's gonna pull up in your UWorld question bank as your incorrect questions. It's really important to go through these questions effectively because these essentially are the topics that you don't know well. Once you do your incorrects, you're gonna bridge a huge gap and normally your score raises exponentially after that. A lot of people like to do their incorrects after the first round of UWorld, but I recommend doing it after the second round. Mainly because in your first round, you're not learning anything. You're just consolidating all the information. The second round is more where you evaluate everything you learn and everything you got wrong in your second round is basically a depiction of where your knowledge gap is. This is why I believe after the second round, your incorrects are a better representation of what you don't know, so you can put a little more focus on it and do it more effectively. And be sure to like and subscribe this video for more quality content on how to prepare for the USMLE.